Hi guys, in this video, I'm sharing all my tips and process on how I got to build a solid makeup editorial portfolio, which along the way became my business card in order to get signed with an artist agency and work in the film industry in India, a country where I had no network or professional contact to begin with. So guys, the more editorial shooting you'll be doing with different photographers and fashion stylists and hairstylists and whatever, the more you'll learn about what is a good color grading, how does lighting work, what is a good lighting for a picture, how do I go about skin retouching, stuff like how much budget should I have for a studio renting, stuff like what is the price around the market to pay for a retoucher, for example. So these are all the stuff that I learned throughout my journey of building my career and like building my editorial portfolio and then my website, etc. Another really important thing about test shoot is that this is the moment where you can experiment and create your own style. Sometimes people will hire you because you have a certain signature and a certain aesthetic and they appreciate that and that's what they will look into you and not someone else because your work doesn't really match the mainstream. Although it's important to have what general clients are looking for, like a bridal portfolio or something like very commercial, no makeup, makeup, etc. But when it comes to editorial, it's also really important to have your own signature, your own style as an artist. So now when it comes to organizing a test shoot, it's really important to not just say, let's do a test shoot, but really start with the vision, start with the end in mind. So to do a test shoot, I need a clear vision of where I want to go and the stuff that I want to create. What is the approach in terms of artistry? For that, I will obviously use tools like Instagram and Pinterest. But something really important is also to look at artists that you admire, to look up to artists that are really key in this makeup industry and what it is about their signature that make it so special about their work. For this particular editorial that I'm talking about today, I created a mood board that is very edgy and actually anti-glam, like really different from what my regular client will ask me in India. I created a mood board that is very inspired by It's Amaya French and that is very edgy. In terms of makeup, I wanted something with the use of different techniques, mixing texture and eyebrow camouflage, for example. So once I know more or less what I want to create and I have a mood board ready and everything and I know what I want to execute, come the other part probably because it takes a lot of time and it's creating a team. Creating a team means find a photographer, find a fashion stylist. Uh, if you do only makeup, then you will have to find probably someone for hair. And I'm just saying that this is a difficult part because you actually have to go out there and find those people and build a network. Although for my case, when I first came to India, I didn't know anyone, so Instagram was my best friend and I was just spending hours scrolling and trying to find people and approach them. Um, my best advice would be to, when you approach someone like a photographer, for example, just don't go and say, oh, let's do a shoot, but it's important to come and present like what you have in mind, what is your vision, present a mood board. When you approach someone, mostly now everything is online and I think it's really important to present a mood board and really come across as someone who know what they want and know what they are doing and know where they're going also. The same way that you approached a fashion stylist or a photographer through DM on Instagram, you can also talk to your different model agency and they'll be able to recommend new profiles for test shoots. For the shoot that I'm doing today, my model is Aya. She has a really beautiful skin and uh, she's really good with poses in front of the camera, which is perfect as this is gonna be mostly a beauty editorial. So for this particular editorial, I'll be looking into all details prior the shoot. So I think it's really important to plan everything ahead that will help you to get the best picture you can get. And on the day of the shoot also, there will be no surprise and less problem to fix. So for this particular beauty editorial with Arya and Trisha, Arya and I discussed the clothes and what she was going to be wearing on that day. So we just had a discussion prior to the shoot and select a few pieces from her wardrobe as well as my wardrobe. And because these are beauty editorial pictures, it was really important for me to have the hands and the nails showing really nicely on the picture. So Arya and I went to the nail salon. 
and we decided to go with nails extension and a particular nail art. Obviously, this is a lot of investment of money and your own time, but when it comes to editorial and showing your own work, it really makes the difference. On the day of the shoot, I always make sure to come a little prior on time because you'll be renting a studio and so there's a time limit. You want to show you maximize your time for this. I will also discuss with Trisha what kind of lighting we're going for for one specific look. For this beauty editorial, we are creating three looks, three strong looks that are very different from each other. And I wanted to use specific techniques that are also very different like uh, lips ombre and hair painting and eyebrow painting for example guys finding photographers and artists that are also very creative and that will be very flexible with stuff like lighting uh, is a blessing i've been working with trisha for the last couple of years i guess and i've been lucky enough to find someone really creative and really flexible in terms of creating different fields for a picture experimenting it can be find different lighting ideas for different looks, for example, or a different angle for a certain look and a certain picture, or even trying different poses and make it everything look more edgy. So yeah, my advice would be to really try and work with different people. And along the way, you eventually find the people that work with the same vision as the one that you have. Then after the shoot with the girls, we'll, we'll have a discussion about what we think is the best to select and what worked the best as a overall selection of the three looks. If you're starting and you're really new to this, I would recommend not to select too many images of one look because you'll probably be running on one budget and you have to be careful about that. And it won't make any difference at the beginning to have so many images of just like one look. So at the beginning, I would say that like two images of the same look is enough and the final step before you finally get your final images is the retouching it's very tricky at the beginning to find a good retoucher that is also affordable it's probably one of the hardest tasks i would say that what is really key is not selecting images that are overexposed this will never work in a portfolio and if you want to show your makeup skill on a picture try to find a retoucher that doesn't smooth out the skin too much that doesn't go over 10 to 15 percent uh, skin retouch that's already like a lot for me i think for me i consider that i invested a lot of money at the beginning and even still now when i'm creating pictures so it's important when a retoucher gives you your images back to come with feedback if you think that is necessary here i'm giving you an example of back and forth feedback that i'm giving to the retoucher when it comes to little detail to fix on a picture so you can see before after and that's it for this one guys i really hope you find this video helpful and that you got an insight of what are the steps that you need to do to produce pictures as a makeup artist if you like the video please let me know in the comment below and let me know what you would like to see next and please like and subscribe